Yes, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to make crystal clear, crystal clear that uh, uh, several patients that are now uh, currently uh, selected for the diagnosis of brain death, they could be recovered to a normal daily life if they were not submitted to a PNEA test and they were given timely, updated, proper treatment. So this is something very important and I would like to make that clear, crystal clear. Uh, in other words, uh, by uh, performing those tests for brain death, those so-called diagnostic tests for brain death, we are killing patients to make sure that they are dead, which is nonsense. So this is the first statement that I would like to make uh, clear, crystal clear, as I said. And why am I, say, am I saying that? Uh, we have to go back to 1968, when uh, uh, brain death, the concept of brain death, was introduced into medicine, medical practice. Uh, back to 1968, uh, physicians, medical doctors, used to think that uh, when we had uh, uh, no detectable uh, neurological functions, uh, which is performed by the brain, the only possible explanation would be uh, irreversible uh, intracranial circulatory arrest. And why would this uh, circular, circulatory arrest occur? Uh, the reason why uh, there is uh, a lack of brain circulation in a patient who is a victim of uh, brain trauma, head trauma, is because after the injury, the brain begins to be sw swollen. Uh, and as the volume of the brain increases, the pressure into the skull increases too. Uh, so that uh, as time goes by, the intracranial vessels that are supplying blood to the brain are compressed uh, by this uh, increased uh, pressure. And uh, back in 1968, uh, we used to think that when uh, all those uh, so-called uh, uh, cephalic reflexes mm -hmm. were like, popul like popul uh, mm -hmm. popular reflex mm -hmm. to light, mm -hmm. for example, when all those reflexes uh, were no longer uh, detectable. The only possible explanation is that uh, the intracranial pressure, pressure uh, had reached uh, maximum values. That means that uh, the blood vessels uh, within the intracranial cavity were completely compressed and there were, there were no blood flow to the brain. So, uh, uh, they associated the lack of function to necrosis, to irreversible uh, damage to the brain tissue. Lack of function, no function, no vitality. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's uh, the concept, uh, the, physiolog the pathophysiological concept that was proposed in 1968 uh, to uh, uh, select uh, the criteria to diagnose brain death. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, later on, uh, uh, the uh, progress of uh, medical science uh, demonstrated that when the blood flow is decreased to only half the normal level, mm -hmm. the, those reflexes cannot, uh, can no longer be uh, detected but the brain is, is still recoverable mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. 
within the range of uh, 20 to 50 percent of brain blood flow uh, of the normal brain, brain blood flow the brain is uh, functionally silent but it is, it's still recoverable mm -hmm. okay uh, if you induce uh, uh, the apnea test that means that you stop mechanical ventilation in order to increase uh, the carbon uh, the carbon dioxide concentration in the blood. When you do that, uh, you cause uh, what we call in medicine uh, a sudden respiratory acidosis. And that means that uh, uh, there will be a negative effect on the strength uh, of uh, heartbeats. In other words, the patient will, will develop hypertension. And this is known to occur in up to 40% of patients that are submitted to apnea test. If you induce hypertension, you will decrease the, the blood circulation. Mm -hmm. And if the patient was uh, within, uh, having blood levels to the brain, within that, that range, uh, of 50, uh, of 20 to 50 percent of the normal level, and you decrease the blood pressure, the blood flow will go down to the range of uh, down to the uh, below the level of 20 percent, and that means that we we'll, you can induce uh, irreversible brain damage by performing the apnea test. In, a, in addition to that, uh, if you are decreasing the blood flow to the brain you are also decreasing the blood flow to the, the respiratory uh, centers. Those centers uh, are the structures that you are testing when you do the apnea test. You want to know whether the, the, the brainstem, the respiratory centers in the brainstem, will respond to increases in carbon dioxide concentrations. But if you, if you decrease the blood pressure, you will be decreasing the uh, blood flow to respiratory centers, mm -hmm. and the respiratory center will not respond to, to, uh, to apnea test. And you can, you can damage the respiratory centers irreversibly. You can irreversibly damage the respiratory centers by inducing apnea in these patients. Uh, it should be uh, clear that uh, uh, the apnea test may last up to 10 minutes. A patient can be uh, without proper respiration, uh, mechanical uh, respiration for up to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And this may kill the patient. Uh, and that's why I'm saying that when we are testing those patients uh, for brain death, mm -hmm. uh, we are killing them. Uh, we are killing uh, an unknown number of those patients. Some of those patients may have uh, irreversible brain damage prior to those tests, but a large number of them may be recoverable up to that point. And when you induce a clear test in those patients that up to that point could be recovered, they, can, they are no longer recovered. Nearly all of those patients are having decreased production of thyroid hormones because the signal, the signal that comes from the brain uh, in order to stimulate the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones, uh, this signal is decreased as the blood flow is not normal to the range of uh, so-called ischemic penumbra which is insufficient to cause irreversible damage. If the blood flow is at that, is at that level, you will have decreased the levels of uh, the hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland mm -hmm. to produce uh, its own hormones. Mm -hmm. That is a condition called hypothyroidism. And if you have decreased the production of uh, thyroid hormones, the, the respiratory centers will not respond to apnea tests. That's the second reason why 
the respiratory centers cannot respond to apnea test. So those patients are not receiving proper updated uh, timely treatment. Uh, patients having hypothyroidism uh, will have uh, uh, increased uh, brain edema. I mean, the, the brain will increase in size and it will cause further increase in intracranial pressure. Mm -hmm. That means that the, uh, the blood vessels will be further compressed by the presence of hypothyroidism. And if you don't treat hypothyroidism in these patients, you cannot uh, uh, have the uh, regression of brain edema. You cannot save those lives. Another issue is that exactly for the same reason, because you have a partially decreased blood pressure and, and blood flow to the brain, uh, you, have, you may also have decreased production, production of uh, the, the hormone that uh, stimulates the, uh, another gland that is called adrenal gland. And without uh, uh, adrenal hormones, you will have low blood pressure mm -hmm. and the patient will die if you don't replace those hormones. So you have two little conditions, which is hypothyroidism and uh, uh, adrenal failure in patients who are in deep coma, for example, as a consequence of uh, severe head trauma. Mm -hmm. Two uh, conditions that would be lethal if they were isolated and not treated. Mm -hmm. And they, they are associated in the same person. Mm -hmm. So you have two lethal conditions that are left untreated in patients uh, with severe head trauma. And those patients, instead of receiving proper treatment, these patients are uh, uh, submitted to apnea tests sometimes once or twice uh, to make sure that they are brain dead. Yeah. But and what, by what doing this, they are inducing death in patients that could be recovered okay. to normal life. That's mm -hmm. very important. We are not talking about recovering to uh, a vegetative state. Yes, we are calling. Say. We are talking about mm -hmm. recovering to normal life. To a normal life. Mm -hmm. Yes. But why don't they change the criteria of brain death when they all know that uh, from from 2000 to now? Do they know that? But why don't they change it? Yes. Uh, uh, we have been asking those that question in. Uh, uh, medical websites, mm -hmm. like like in the British Medical Journal website, mm -hmm. and uh, the answers that uh, we got simply surprises us. They don't know. No, uh, they say that they cannot uh, avoid. Uh, they, they cannot avoid doing a nap test because if the patients breathe breathes mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in the operating room. Mm -hmm that would be a disaster mm -hmm. for the transplant surgeon mm -hmm. because it would be crystal clear that the, that patient was alive by the, by the time when the, their organs, his organs were uh, retired, yeah. uh, but, but uh, taken away. Yeah. But uh, but uh, the, the, the reason why they are performing the apnea test is because uh, uh, in no culture uh, all over the world, a patient who is able to breathe can be considered dead. So they say that they have to test those patients for their ability to breathe because taking them to the operating room. What is the conclusion with the abnormal test? What, what shall a doctors do now? Well, uh, the worst thing about that is the worst thing about that is that uh, uh, most uh, doctors don't know about what we are discussing here. So that's why it's so important for you uh, to uh, take these discussions to the general public, because then medical doctors will have to, 
to be updated about the, uh, the physiological issues uh, related to, uh, to coma. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they would understand that by inducing apnea test for up to 10 minutes, they are killing patients uh, in order to make sure that they are dead. And they don't know that but because they are taught that legal. this is the pro legal procedure to be done. Yeah. We, uh, we have uh, told uh, those things to uh, those who support the transplantation system mm -hmm. and uh, we got no answers. Mm -hmm. We simply got no answers. Once in an international meeting, a uh, uh, neurologist told me that uh, there is no problem about performing apnea test because he said he knew in advance that the patient was already dead. But this is nonsense because the test is a diagnostic test. How can he have the diagnosis in advance if he is about to perform the test to diagnose brain death? Mm -hmm. But that's it's the only problem. answer that I got. Yeah. It, it induces that. Mm -hmm. Induces that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I repeat what I said before. Uh, by uh, performing the apnea test, we are killing patients in order to make sure that they are dead. Uh, the apnea test is performed without the consent of the family. And we know that some of those patients, this is, is being published in the medical literature, we know that some of those patients uh, may have cardiac arrest during, irreversible cardiac arrest during the test. Mm -hmm. Because the test is so aggressive mm -hmm. to them, uh, what about to the heart function. But when you, when you do that test on a patient for the diagnosis of brain death, you are not uh, uh, anticipating any benefit to that patient. Mm -hmm. He had only the risks of the, te of the tests. He will not have any benefit from that test. And that's why uh, all those diagnostic tests, including especially the apnea tests, uh, are, are unethical. There is no possible benefit for the patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is being denied uh, proper uh, updated, uh, timely treatment. If you uh, want to perform a test on your relative, which is defenseless because he is in coma, so you have to give permission to that. And if you have to be to, to give permission to that, you have to be informed about the risks and the benefits. And then the doctor will have to tell you honestly that there is no benefit and there is a lot of risks and you have to sign it that you accept that. If you do that, if you, if, if you are properly informed, you would not sign because there is no benefit and you now know that your relative is not receiving proper treatment.